Hello everybody, it's Miss Shelby Teletti. Today we're going to uh, uh, cover a lot of different topics. I got a little bit of an allergy cold, so sorry about that. Um, today, actually, I noticed that we never really did talk specifically about the difference between a varifocal lens and a zoom lens. And I happen to have a varifocal lens. You saw this in another video demo. And you know, when you set for wide to telephoto, it says you have to keep refocusing it every single time because it doesn't keep the focus. Um, it's great, but for if you're gonna, um, if you want to set the different depth focal lengths, but you have to refocus for each time, that's kind of awkward. Um, it's fairly inexpensive, but it's kind of awkward. I have here, and I did not get a chance to demonstrate that much is a television grade zoom. This is a Sony zoom lens here. Um, this is a, has a focal range of 20 millimeters to 80 millimeters. Um, that means it's technically a little wider um, than what we're using now, which is about 25 millimeters. And um, so anyway, um, this here, is just like Grandpa Peel show tell Showtime Rotisserie, set it and forget it. And once you focus it, ideally, the uh, the focus ring should not necessarily move, and you should be able to keep things in focus as you adjust the um, the wide angle to telephoto function. Um, this is a very expensive lens. It's also very heavy. Um, it's I want I am going to show it to you on this camera. Because I think for those of you who have never seen a zoom, or maybe you have just kind of seen a zoom, but you never really got into the technology. So I could show you this on this camera. Because it is so much heavier, I had to adjust um, some controls in the camera uh, to keep the focus ring from sagging. It is... <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how many pounds of force is on here, but this this thing here is, this is just an aluminum spacer ring, and uh, this is definitely a very heavy camera um, lens. This thing, um, I don't have any way of testing the, the sheer weight of um, the pressure points on this, but I can tell you right now that um, this camera works, the lens really works really well. So I'm going to set this up so you can see how this works, and um, let's see how it does. Let me just take the camera, the microphone with me too, so you can hear me as I work on it. Now, one thing about this body is it's a CS mount body, and we have a special spacer ring. Um, you can see Mr. Fuzzball is kind of our subject for today, and so. We want to be careful with the taking the rings off. And then, then we put this lens back on here. I'm going to snug it on, but not, don't want to wrench tighten it. You just want to snug it on. Just like we do normally, I'm going to bring down the stop. Um, I'm going to zoom it out. Um, okay, and I'm going to bring it to, now you can see, um, looking at Mr. Cat, we're in telephoto here, you can see how, now I'm at a wide angle, okay, and we can see how it changes to dusk. So let me go ahead and put another topic on here since he moved, and uh, let's have a focusing this thing. It's always easier to focus, they say, in telephoto mode. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to bring this back. Now you see, when I did that, it comes back nice and smooth. And if the camera mechanism, this is a 1973 lens, by the way. If the camera lens is perfect, I can keep doing this and it will keep 
the focus at all times. Okay. Not bad, huh? Well, let's see how it looks with the actual chart of squares. Now, because there's a reflection of the key light, we're going to have to give that a slight angle. So now I'm going to move and try to get this in, in focus. Okay, so we do the same thing. Remember, I told you you focus it till it looks its worst, that means it's at its best. Now I can do the same thing back. I can pull it back. I can pull it in. See how that looks? Yep. It's pretty cool, huh? Now, we now for this test, we did not uh, set the aperture ring probably exactly correct. Um, because it's in between um, stops. So I just only set it down a few stops. Let me explain that to you right here. Since we can do this now, we can demonstrate this to you. You see these grayscale, these gradients. These gradients here tell you, you wanna to try to get all of them. So you wanna just, just, just tiniest bit. But now we're getting into the half stops. Um, and that's really the best right there. Okay, so let me switch this back to our main lens. Same thing, gently unscrew, hold the barrel of the lens, not, uh, don't hold it by the threads because you'll strip them. It's because this camera lens is so heavy. Okay, now if I have this lens pre-focused, I can, and this lens is small enough that I can do this. I hold it on with the lens, screw it to the barrel. Turn the step down a bit. And it's hard to get this in focus. Okay, now, you saw the result of the lens. You saw how the sink can get into the grain of the chair behind me. You saw how I can get really tight. I don't have to necessarily refocus every time I go wide to tello. It just it tracks it accordingly and compensates for that. You can see that this is a very fast lens. Um, this has got... A really nice 1.25. Uh, is that what it is? 1.25? Certainly faster than yours. Yeah, it's 2. No, it's 2.5. Okay. F or T stop is 2.5. It's, it's uh, as I said, it's a fast lens. It's a great lens. It holds a 52 millimeter thread here. Um, we didn't use this thing for a long time because we did not have a um a infrared blocking filter in the camera and we were using an infrared an ADA filter or um ADB filter to compensate for the um all the infrared all the infrared in here and that was the reason we never used it um but now you're probably asking yourself is why aren't you using it now well, for most of the shots I do here, we don't really need it. It's just, it's just like an extra tool, you know. It's like having an extra small screwdriver for your toolbox in case you gotta fix microstop electronics, like you know, tiny electronic watches and calculators and things like that. It's an additional tool that can be used to allow us to give us a little more um, features that we can use for video work. 
it also makes it possible for us to um, be more capable of expanding our video choices as well. And yeah, if you use it with a 2x teleconverter, um, you can indeed um, make a really nice um, setup. But I'm going to right now tell you, if you're going to use a 2x teleconverter to bring it up to 160 at its telephoto zoom and 40 and its wide angle, um, it's going to add a lot more weight to this lens. It's also going to reduce re result in less light going to the lens. So you're going to have to open up the f-stop quite a bit. Um, right now our studio lights are pretty bright. Um, we usually shoot about 5.6. That's what we've been using for a long time on our cameras. And um, so we're doing pretty good there. Um, however, how's the eye report? Right now, I'm looking at the bright key light right in front of me, and the hail on my eyes is, like, minimal. Very, very minimal. I can tell you right now, um, we're, of course, working with both eyes simultaneously. I am not seeing hail hours on the light fixtures. Any of them of any significance whatsoever. Yes! Yes, indeed. Great. <laughs> I am very happy about that, especially because the fact is now... I am going to be able to see again. Okay, so it's still work in progress. Yeah. Sometimes my eyes kind of get hard and then I, my right eye does and my right eye kind of rebels and, well, a little bit, but it doesn't really have much of a chance. Even by just popping my, 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 my left eye and look at everything, I can see that the right eye is beginning to sharpen up all on its own. This is what I'm talking about. Even with this guy covered, the halos are there. But they're not debilitating. Congratulations. Thank you. And like I said in the video about my a vlog about my eyes, I mean, the Cancy eye drops for me has been a godsend. I must tell you that while in, in some ways it takes a little longer than going for the um, cataract surgery, um, the advantage is, is it's non-invasive. It's cheaper, um, really. I mean, 12 boxes, a $40 a box is what? 480 bucks. 480 bucks versus $2,500 for a surgery. Not including medications. Um, any kind of um, antibiotics or things like that. Not including the risk of getting detached retinas. Not including the risk of pain and suffering for at least a week. While your eyes heal, the cornea heals after the, after the ophthalmologist does the sutures in the eye. No risk of infection. Well, that last one could be happen. Yes, it could happen. But again, um, that would be more from just like with surgery, improper preparation of the the medication and application of the medication. So, yes, it could happen, but um, I, I'm just so much, much more happy to see the results. And um, like I said last night, I'm really, really ex excited with the results. It's made a major difference in my life. Um, focusing the camera, mm, yeah, actually, it did do a good job on that. It is, yep. Absolutely. Okay, still let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were in a photography class with Mr. Dimitri at Northwestern, what was the most important recommendation that he would he gave for you? Because your eyesight. He suggested that I should use a wide angle lens when I could, or like he suggested for all the students is. If you're going to use a zoom, is set the zoom for the telephoto mode, in this case 80 millimeters, and then focus with that, and then bring back out the lens to the wider angles, and that will keep it sharper. And um, because you're, you're critically focusing on, because when you have a wide angle, there's a lot more uh, forgiveness for focus errors. All right, is that why we use the wide angle on the, on the camera here? No, we use the wide angle because the the 25 millimeter because that's the best size for this room. Um, 
Now, of course, these are 16 millimeter movie projector, uh, movie camera lenses, C mount movie camera lenses. Okay, they're designed for film, not for CCD cameras. The CCD sensor we're using is actually an 8 millimeter sensor. So you figure out that what you're doing is you're actually, because you're using a 16 millimeter camera lens, on a 8 millimeter camera. That means that it's the depth of the field is effectively doubled. Right, so in that case, a 25 millimeter is about 25 millimeter. It's, it, it's, it's, for this camera here, it's, it's, it's more like a, um, a bit of a, um, a, um, a telephoto. Okay, so it's not really a telephoto, telephoto, but it's a bit like a telephoto. Yeah, and this movie TV lens came from a camera that was using a Viticon picture tube, a pickup tube. And so this was, again, was designed for a half-inch sensor. That would be closer to a 16 millimeter. Okay, so when you look at, this gets confusing. The whole point is, is... If you're going to do it like I'm doing with lenses, um, just you have to just try out the different lenses to see which one works for you. And in the case of using a security camera like this or any other kind of camera that gives you this kind of feature of a back focus ring, um, it definitely helps to have a card like we have because it allows you to dial in the critical focus and to calibrate the lens to match the foot on the um, scale. Let me explain how you do that. Um, so, so let's say you're using this lens here, okay, a 20 millimeter lens, okay. Focus at 80 millimeter, okay. That means turn it in all the way into telephoto. Now, um, if the camera has automatic exposure, which in this case, would you want to use it with aperture priority and let the, the camera shutter adjust, okay? You want to use this thing all the way open at 2.5. And you would set your distance at approximately 6 feet, okay? So you do is you look for the mark right here, see? You would set it for 6 feet. You have to confirm that your subject is exactly 6 feet away. Then, very carefully, putting this thing on your camera body, uh, on something like the Panasonic CP234, the back focus is like really coarse, and you got to go really slow, and you have to stay tight with a screwdriver. Um, this camera here has got a very fine back focus. So this one is easier. You need to just make sure this lens barrel is, is snug. You don't have to wrench tighten it. Uh, I wouldn't anyway, but um, and it's up to you. And then you would just go ahead and then turn the back focus to your 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 test card is clear and sharp at the the the, the, um, the 80 millimeter setting. And then when you zoom it back out, it should still be sharp at the 20 millimeter setting, and that will give you a good point of reference uh, how well the focus is. If you want to try critically focusing a 20 millimeter, that's fine, but you know, you may not get quite as good, but because it's so much, so much more leeway. Okay. Once you got the thing where it says six feet and your actual subject is exactly six feet away, you can use measuring tape for that. Um, then, you know, and then you can lock the focus back focus ring on the camera you're using, which in the case of my camera uses a jeweler screwdriver, a little flathead, um, to tighten up the screw. And that will be how you set the back focus. Um, you don't want to wrench it tight because you might break it. You just want to just snug it up so it's not going to uh, move under routine environments. Okay. And could you give us a waste report? Now? Yeah. Why don't we show people how we do it? Okay. Sure thing. Oh, I'm going to uh, do this back here. Because this way you can see the measuring tape. Now, the measuring tape is kind of battered and broken. So we have to just kind of try to give it a snug. Start one. Find your waist. 
Your waist is where you pinch like this. If it's not down here, it's not your hips. Okay, so we're gonna focus on the waist. Pull it taut. Suck in your gut. 43. Okay, that's still the same. That's still the same. Now, we do the great flap. We do the flap because this is the part that's gonna affect your uh, pants, underwears, and things like that. And we do we do these measurements like three times because of averaging. Because 47. Just like the lottery man, on the next number, we're gonna keep the average it. So we just kind of just trying to pull the snug pot. 47, 46. See, I saw the number change. It went from 47 to 46. That tells me that somewhere between those two numbers is the right one. Forty-six. Our winning lottery numbers are today are forty-three, forty-six. Now, what about the um relaxed flap test? I never did a relaxed flap test. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, we'll do that. Measuring from the widest girth. No pinching. Uh, just get it snug. Don't, don't suck in the girth. Fifty. It's not bad. Okay, so would that be a good corset material? Yes, a corset would work wonderful with that and uh, would provide a nice trim from um, belly area, hips area. Well, actually, what you probably would use is a waist clincher. Right. I'm thinking about going for a full overbust corset. That's kind of good. That's kind of be... Um, it's that's gonna be more expensive. It's gonna be more expensive, but it also will redefine my upper torso. Yeah, but I think right now you need some new clothes. So this dress is is old. It's, I'm I'm the fourth owner of it. Um, yeah, I guess you're right. It's it's certainly to me today. It's it's getting battered. Um, and of course we are waiting for the um many um um. Many dollars to come on Friday, the regular Social Security. By the way, I want to thank Jonathan Ung for his 25 Canadian donation. Uh, it helped a lot for food this week. So I was able to use it for buying some food. And um, I was going to buy some stuff next week, but then oh, I'm pretty good for the studio and things. But Crystal said to me, she said, but Michelle, I thought you were going to pay off your credit cards. I I went, oh, crap. <laughs> so she kind of got with her pans and the cookies are in. <laughs> well, I was on my list. Yeah, I know. But so was everything else. Yeah, my life is always like that. Um, but I definitely what is on my list is to get more of the can see eye drops. So that is definitely a on-go. And that's not going to, I'm not going to back down from that. I want to continue with the results of my eyes. And I, like I said, every now and then my eyes get tired, my right eye... The cataracts kind of just remind me that they're getting tired. It's really hard on the eyes because now that my right eye is starting to see better, it's trying to overcompensate and overfocus. And when it does, is the right eye gets kind of tired. And the left eye, of course, is tired because it's been doing all the work. And so my eyes get hazy. I think some of those crazy eyes get dry. Yeah, I definitely think so. So, you know... Um, so what's the near future project for this week? I don't have anything planned. I never really got anything done. Right. By the way, could you tell anybody real quickly any um, suggestions about if they want to set up a studio like yours, what they should consider? Yeah, okay. Uh, why not? Talk about lenses. If you're going to do a studio like mine, the most important thing you need to know is you need to go in there with um, knowledge of what you're doing. It's not like you can go in there and, say, go to a video store and say, um, yeah, hi, I want a deluxe studio outfit, please, with all the trimmings. It doesn't work that way. And even if he had one, he's going to charge you top dollar for the one that's the most expensive, most premium package. Saying so you need all that hardware of barn doors and, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, they're going to do that. That's if that's that's nothing wrong with having barn doors and halogens or CFLs or LED lights. I mean, you can certainly go that way. I mean, there's, I mean, sometimes the barn doors on these uh, lights would have been great. Um, so I could, you know, redirect some lights, um, you know, control shadow. Um, but unfortunately, I never really needed it, so I never went there. Um, but uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to choose um, the tool that works for you. So when you are shooting video here on YouTube, um, there's there's a lot of things you can do. You can, you can get really sophisticated. Look what we're using. We're using a security camera head, um, a computer, a PAL to PAL slash NTSC to FireWire converter card. You can also get the USB versions as well. I'm more familiar with the FireWire one, okay? Which I can then feed into either iMovie or Final Cut Express or Final Cut Pro. And then I go ahead and I process it and then I upload it that way. You don't want to go that fancy. I didn't start out fancy. I started out with my iPhone like I did when I was in the hotel. Start out with an iPhone, basically would prop it up in a pile of books and then basically do a video that way. Um, and I mean, it's not as good and quality isn't there, but uh, to get a video out in a hurry, that was a way to do it. And hurry was right because you had to do it in less than 10 minutes. Because I couldn't upload it using the computer because my computer was at the house and not at the hotel. Um, so I had to basically keep the videos under 10 minutes. Um, that's certainly a way to go. I mentioned that briefly before about cameras. And um, so the first thing you should do is remember, is cameras only the first part of the project. You're going to need one of these, a microphone. Whatever system you choose is going to be the one you'll be working with for a while because of the investment cost. So you want to choose the gear that works for you and is within the range that you consider a, a, a affordable option. Also, can I make a suggestion? If you have pets, unless you want your cats or dogs to become a key piece of the video, you might want to have a room where you can close the door to keep cats and dogs and kids out of your studio. Um, I don't have that privilege, so I gotta deal with the cats in here. Um, at least this cat is a happy kitty. He's not a bad cat. Um, Rusty is doing to whatever Rusty's doing. I think he's looking for I think he's going with his girlfriend again. I think so too. Well, I'm, I, the way Rusty has been indicating to me is that he's got he's finally found a female kitty. And I know that he has been very, very actively outside. So um, that's great. I'm happy for him. And um, right now we have got to get ready to edit this down. We're going to use this on all three uh, channels. We're going to use this on my channel, Welcome to My World channel, and, of course, Cable 13. So we're going to use this video on all three. So we have to crap this thing down to fit any 30 minute period of time and uh yeah you can see he's he's very happy he's a happy kitty he's absolutely oh can i ask you uh audience question oh yeah who's a better who's a better interviewer me or michelle i mean we always wondered that because you know we don't know who's really the better one and who do you like better who do you think has a better video presentation um personality on camera um you can add you can answer the question right here to come below or but if you need to see other video clips you can check out my channel at uh www.youtube.com forward slash usc or forward slash l-u-m-i-f-i-n-i-s-t-r-a and of course you can check this channel and also check out our channel at www.youtube.com forward slash U-S-E-R forward slash N-A-S-Q. Welcome to my world and uh, check out all the videos that we have done. It's a really simple question. Uh, we're not going to get offended if whatever you say, me and Michelle. I just would like to know who is the better commentator, interviewer, and in what areas do you feel that they are best suited uh, for their work? Um, I know that I tend to work on a lot of spirituality Michelle does a lot of technical stuff, but do you, who do you feel has a better presence on camera and why? Oh, like I said, you could even comment down here. Please do. We'd love to hear from you 
about that and um and do check out all the other channels as well absolutely all right guys we're gonna let you go absolutely you want me to say it yeah go ahead don't forget to like or dislike share with your friends family enemies whatever subscribe if you have not already done so comment and answer that question in the comment section below and we will see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, guys.